ODR really started back in the 90s when the internet took off, especially with commercial disputes. Um, it, the general idea was that we didn't really need face-to-face -face interaction to deal with conflict, um, especially with commercial disputes through any sort of online mechanism because they were, well, there's a lot of them. They typically were low value, just some sort of commercial complaint. Um, and it was all cross borders, cross jurisdictional. You couldn't just bring people together to work something out. So there needed to be a different way of addressing the problem. Um, and that's essentially how ODR began, was this adaptation of trying to find software that could help work through conflicts that basically were all coming up online where you couldn't do something face to face. And that is basically where the term the fourth party began. So the fourth party is a metaphor for how software can substitute for human in a lot of ADR mechanisms and processes. Um, and we see that a lot. The most common ones are email. Um, it's the one we've been using for a really long time. So in that, in that way, ODR has been around for a very long time. But the thing that really brought everyone's attention to it is Zoom, video conferencing like we're on now. That's been the really big thing uh, because it seems to be the part that kind of can go wrong the most obviously for us, especially when everyone started using it and things were sort of falling apart. Nobody really knew how to get everything working at the very, be very beginning. Um, and the thing is, when we're using these programs, when we're using these fourth parties, they essentially become our partner. Um, we become in a way responsible for them as long as we have control over them. Um, but this is also just the very beginning. Where this goes in the future is very actually kind of scary in a way. Um, I mean, if you think about the things that AI can do, if you get into quantum computing, which I'm not going to get into, but if you think about where technology can go, there's a lot of things can be replaced when it comes to dispute resolution. So if we think of the very basic sort of simple complaints, eBay processes over 60 million complaints cases annually um, without a person involved. It's all automated systems and they resolve about 80% of them. So they already have a system that's been around for decades now. Um, they've been doing that really well. And if you look at the influence AI has had or other technologies right now, um, IBM's Watson AI system is responsible for doing a lot of legal research, case research. Um, you can go online and get documents written up that are completely legally binding, again, without a person necessarily being involved. So if we start thinking about moving forward, the influence that AI may have could actually hit a point where we're basically co-mediating with an AI program. Um, that all said, that is somewhat further in the future. We aren't living in sort of a dystopian future where AI is controlling everything quite yet. So at the moment, we still have control over the fourth parties that we're working with. And that's what I want to focus on mostly in this talk, because those are the things we're going to be facing right away. We still have control over Zoom. We have control over our emails and we have control over saving and what we save our um, um, files to anything on the cloud or anything like that. So for the most part, we still have control over what we're doing. So the ethical problems are slightly different now than the people who sort of think really far into the future where we're going to have even less control. And we're thinking more about who actually is developing the programs, what are the programs that we use and sort of really forward thinking when you get too far in the future. 